I'm Michael West, Technical Product Manager with VMware. This is the third video in a series of deep dives into troubleshooting Tanzu Kubernetes Grid clusters. The first two videos focused on building a basic understanding of Kubernetes custom resources and VMware's implementation of cluster API to lifecycle TKG clusters. This video will dive into the cluster creation milestones, look at possible failures in each milestone, and where to look in order to determine a resolution. When a user submits the YAML specification, the first step is to validate the configuration. Most of this is done through webhooks in the Kubernetes API and will return an error prior to creating the TKC resource. Let's look at some of the most common misconfigurations. We begin with a YAML specification that references version 1.30.2 of Kubernetes. This might be valid in 2022, but not today. We submit the specification to the supervisor cluster Kubernetes API and get an immediate validation error telling us it cannot find an image to match the specified version. kubectl get vm image shows us the images that are available in the supervisor cluster and we see that 1.30.2 is not there. These values are populated by a controller that is checking a content library for the set of available images. This content library was created at supervisor cluster deployment and is subscribed to a public CDN that is constantly refreshed with the latest available TKG images. You can see that the images here align with what we just saw in the CLI. Now let's look at a YAML with an invalid storage class. We apply the YAML and can see from the error that bad policy is not a valid storage class. vSphere storage policies are assigned to each namespace and cause a corresponding storage class to be created in the supervisor cluster namespace. To see the storage classes assigned to the namespace, use kubectl describe namespace. Any quotas placed on the storage for this namespace will also show up here. We see that Kubernetes policy is the only policy assigned to this namespace. A quick look at the namespace in the vSphere client verifies that Kubernetes policy is the only storage policy assigned to the namespace and that bad policy was in fact just that. VM class defines the resources for the VMs that make up the cluster nodes. It's a bit trickier to track this error. Validation is not done by a webhook, but happens further down the resource stack. kubectl get vm class shows us all classes available to the cluster. We will use best effort small and extra small. Both the best effort small and extra small classes are defined in the specification. We apply the specification and our YAML passes all of the webhook validation and the TKC resource is created. When we describe TKC, we see a class binding error. Classes can be assigned to individual namespaces. So even though it was available in the cluster, it might not have been bound to the namespace itself. kubectl get vm class binding shows that only best effort extra small was assigned to the namespace. Notice that the machines and WCP machine resources were created and we can look at them for more detail if needed. The machine is a little more specific in its error message. And by describing the WCP machine, you see that the CAPW controller could not create the virtual machine resource because VM class was not bound. CAPW also reflected the summary information up through machine to the TKC resource status. To fix this issue, add the best effort small VM class to the namespace and apply the YAML specification again. As we just saw in the VM class check, the next milestone is the creation of the CAPI and CAPW objects. These were discussed in more detail in the last video of the series. Failure of any of these to create is usually a problem with the TKG cluster controller. Once the CAPI CAPW creation milestone completes, CAPW reconciles WCP machine and creates corresponding virtual machine resources. 
The VM operator then reconciles those objects into actual virtual machines and facilitates bootstrapping the cluster. The first step is to create the first control plane node and get it running prior to creating the other nodes. We apply a valid TKG YAML specification and the TKC resource is created. As we saw previously, all of the machine and WCP machine resources have been created. Also, a new virtual machine resource has been created by the CAPW controller for the first control plane node. The VMware system CAPW namespace contains the CAPI and CAPW controllers. kubectl logs on the CAPW controller is the place to look for failures in creating the virtual machine resources. The VM system VM op namespace contains the VM operator controllers that reconcile the virtual machine resources into actual VMs. If the VM resource exists, but the virtual machine itself never gets created, the error will be found using kubectl log on the primary VM operator controller. Generally, VM creation issues are related to resource constraints, either at the VC level or through limits placed on the namespace. HA admission control can also reserve resource for restart and might be a cause of a failed placement. The next milestone is powering on the first control plane VM. Failures here are in the virtual machine resource, but also are reflected into the TKC resource status. If the VM does not power on, it is generally a resource issue or a problem with the VM operator controller. The next milestone is to verify that the VM has gotten a local IP and that the load balancer virtual IP has been assigned for cluster ingress. kubectl get services will allow you to verify that the load balancer VIP and the internal cluster IP have been assigned. kubectl get endpoints shows the IP addresses for each VM. If there are IPs in both of these commands, you know that the network assignment was successful. Once the VM has been powered on and has an IP, the next milestone is deployment of the various Kubernetes services. Cloud init scripts are run, and if there is a failure, we want to verify which of the various services might be impacted. After the first control plane node is configured and the API is responding, the final milestone is that the rest of the WCP machine resources are reconciled into virtual machine resources and then further into virtual machines. Troubleshooting a failure in any of these nodes can be done in the same way as the initial control plane node. You can determine the health of the Kubernetes API by curling the health endpoint and verify an OK is returned. In the rare instance where a meaningful error surfaced into the virtual machine resource or VM operator controller doesn't solve the problem, you will need to SSH into the node to dig further. The node password is stored as a secret in the supervisor cluster. We decode it and log in. Our troubleshooting starts by grepping the cloud init log for success to determine if the provisioning completed as expected. You can also verify that the Kubernetes services are running by searching the process list. The Kubernetes agent called the kubelet stores its logs in the system journal. Lower level driver, resource, or connectivity errors may be shown here. We've exited the node VM Verifying the add-ons completed successfully is done through the status of the TKC custom resource. Notice that the control plane nodes and worker nodes are ready, the add-ons were successfully added, and finally that the phase of the cluster is running. That is the telltale that the cluster is ready to use. Let's log in to verify that everything works. After login, we set the context to point to our new cluster. Run any kubectl command to verify that the API is responding correctly.